praise him like you know he's been good to you. Woke up this morning, saw you on your way, in your right mind. You got eyes to see, you got ears to hear. Good, 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 good. He's going for it. Oh, he's going it. Because he's Listen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Whatever you've been praying for, you're gonna see it happen. Live, 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 live. Live, 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 live. Whatever you do now, whatever you do now, find your strength and find your strength and. Your strength and I your strength and you're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Whatever you pray for, you're gonna see it happen. Whatever you've been fasting for, you're gonna see it happen. Here we go. Lip, 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 lip. We got the good preacher. I'm free. Praise God. No, no more things holding me. Oh, it's just. Live, 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 live. All right. I told him last night, I'll tell you again. It's our party. And we can dance if we want to. We're not going to be a bad host, but don't be bad business. Dance, son. Dance, son. Last time I checked, 
Bob did not say he didn't have it preaching. And I know you like being prophets, but he don't even have it prophecy. Oh, well, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And I know you're an orator and you like to do Greek and Hebrew, but he doesn't inhabit your teaching either. But the Bible clearly says he inhabits the praise of his people. Which simply means this is all five folks jump. When I see praise, I see God. 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 Dance, ladies, black. Dance, 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 dance. So, 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 mom, mom, folks, what the Lord decided to do this morning? Come down just a little bit. What the Lord decided to do this morning, Bishop? Apostle Lester, Apostle Hawkins, what he decided to do this morning, he decided to stop by here. And he filled with the Holy Ghost a family of four girls. So don't think our praise ain't got no power. We're praising for what he already done for us. Oh, that's a mama. We still do it in the old fashioned way. Paul is there. Paul is there. Paul is there. Paul is there. Look at the people. Y'all missed that. If you want to know what the priest is doing, and how the priest is behaving, you look at the people. The Holy Ghost told me this, I'm going to bring the preacher. He said, whatever you do in private, I'm going to make them do publicly. Which means I got to live holy in private as well as in public. Because whatever I do in private, that spirit is going to hit the people in public. And you can't rebuke, y'all quiet, you can't rebuke what you're doing. I have a little brother of mine, and I say that with love, but he's my little brother for real, out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Now I'm going to tell you right now, my church know one thing, we're going to sing this last piece of a song that our boys hang out and we're going to go. My church know one thing, the, the harder we praise, the harder we push the preacher to. We don't shout and sing and get sleepy when the word comes. If that be back, I'll preach before you shout. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I believe that the intensity of your push unlocks the prophecy of the preacher. Now, y'all might not believe that, but I promise you, the intensity of preaching. You like an old man. <laughs> you allow me to heal anything around here, I promise you. And I, I can't even rebuke him because he's talking to Jesus. The intensity.
intensity of your push unlocks prophecy out of a preacher. Let me say this to be clear. Your push will make a preacher that don't prophesy prophesy. Right. Okay, all right. Y'all missed that. Talk, sir. A preacher that don't even hail himself as a prophet. If the hearts of God people push, Come on, sir. God will release and reveal. And I believe tonight there is a revelation getting ready to be revealed through this man of God. I promise you. What key are we going to do this in? I don't know what key that is. Mm. Everybody say bless. Say bless. That's the right key. Everybody say bless. 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 Oh, 
Come on, quiet, sing it like you mean it. Why you burn a big up? You gotta go. Why you trying to sing it up? Oh yeah. Work it out, work it. Work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out. Work it out there. Work it out there. Work it out there. Work it out there. Yeah, yeah. Work it out there. Work, work. Work, 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 Let's pray together, kind Father, how we thank you for navigating our circumstances to be right where we are for the sole purpose of connecting these, your people, to your intentions. I pray, God, tonight that your word will be life for us. I pray, God, that you'll transform Logos, that your written inspired word just for us. Father, that you would transition us to Rhema, that your chisel tailored word just for us. But Father, tonight don't leave us at Rhema, take us to Zoe. For your word says in John 10 and 10, you came that we might have life, that we might have this Zoe experience. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask Lord that you would release a word tonight that shall cause us to never ever be the same again. It's my favorite prayer, God, that you would speak to us not as mere children, but as the mature. Not from the outer court, but from the place of holy of holies, that we might be conformed to the image of your beloved son. I am your instrument. Play me in whatever key you choose. And when we're finished, Father, we be forever careful and quick to give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. And the agreement remains the same, O oh God, that if I do the lifting, Father, you do the drawing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the redeem of the Lord say amen. Well, it is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. This compassion fell us not. And our, yes, Lord, our mercies are new every morning. And our testimony remains the same. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. 
faithful if you know that the Lord has been faithful to you would you turn and tell somebody he's really been faithful to me and if his hand has provided all that you have needed I want you to turn to two other people and tell somebody he's really been faithful to me What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth and let's worship. Shabbat the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, we've got, we've got a long way to go in a short period of time. Uh, Sam, man, if you could just give me just a little bit more here and here, I, I definitely will supersize your happy meal. Uh, listen, it's two things that I definitely understand and I'm in full agreement with two things. The first thing is good leadership is hard to find. And if good leadership is hard to find, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that it is very easy to understand how much God loves you by the leadership that he gives you. And if you've been blessed in 21 years of good leadership... I need us to stand all over this building and let's thank God for the apostle himself and for the pastor herself. Oh, come on, Zion. Let's thank God for the gifts of none other than Dr. Keith and Pastor Keisha Curry. Come on, lift your voice. Let them hear you. the presbyters that are here amongst us to all of the pastors we thank the Lord for all of you I thank God for all of you don't push me like that because you're going to push me overboard because uh, my brakes are slipping when my brakes slip something else happens just look and tell somebody there's a miracle for, my, for me tonight there's a miracle for me tonight no no that was the wrong person I need you to tell somebody else there is a miracle for me tonight all of the Presbyterians, uh, to you, the free and independent, it's been several years that we've been able to come together, and I'm so honored to be in your new house. I come to make a deposit tonight because the last time Apostle came, we went from 2,000 square feet to 8,000 square feet, so I believe... I owe him the same regard. Tell somebody God's about to make some more room. Make, so make some more room. All right, all right. And um, to uh, this amazing church, the Free and Independent, would y'all please help me just thank God for everybody else that's on your row. Just do a 360 and just thank God for everybody else. And then I had the most amazing church in the world travel with me. Some of them were not able to come, but they are on by live. But I had some amazing people. Victorious Praise Greensboro is in the house. We got a van. We've we, 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 we snuck in cars. We packed in like our brothers and sisters of another culture. And we rode down here to be with you all. And uh, we're excited to be in the house today. Amen. Amen. And then not only that, let us thank God for, I believe, the baddest chick in the room. And uh, she's the baddest chick in the world. And I'm trying to stay good because I seen the shoes she had on the night. And uh, um, uh, she going to have to minister to Ron after we finish here. Glory to God. Listen. I believe that this is such a healthy house and um, I'm a little jealous that I wasn't able to preach this at my church because I believe that this is going to be something that's going to help us get to where we've got to go. Would you grab your Bibles with me? Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter number 25. I like that. See... <laughs> That's that militaristic stuff. You, 
Where I come from, that means you want to do something, but I love it because God is about to do something. <laughs> Genesis chapter number 25. I see some great people in the room. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through everybody, but I love all of y'all for real. Like, y'all are family to us. This man and this woman of God trusted us several years ago with sending a family to us in Greensboro to watch over while they were there. And um, that's not something that I take lightly. It's, it's different when you trust people with other souls. And because I pastor the right way, I take every single person that the Lord sends as a jewel. It is not somebody that is cattle. It is somebody's life. And at the end of the day, we've got to be honest and understand that we are sharing our lives together. You took time out of your schedule to be here tonight. You're sharing your life with us. And so for these two individuals, they mean the world to myself and to Lady E because they trusted us. We're going to deal with this trust in just a minute. But, but there, is, there was a word for this house that I really want to lift up that I believe is going to help us get to where we've got to go. Genesis chapter 25, verses 5 and 6, just two verses tonight. The Bible says, And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. I want to tag this text, and if you would, just do me a favor. Look at the person next to you, eyeball to eyeball, and if they can't look at you, that means they've been talking about you. So I want you to look at them eyeball to eyeball and say, Neighbor, the word tonight is, I'm somewhere else. That was the wrong person. I, I, I need you to tell somebody else. I'm somewhere else. Go ahead and tell them, I'm somewhere else. <laughs> to ensure proper protocol, we don't just honor your man and woman of God, but we also honor your father. So honor your father. Dr. Todd M. Hall, we, we honor him today. And um, I'm preaching a word today, uh, tonight for you all that is uh, in great influence by my pastor. Today is his Episcopal anniversary, Dr. Jonathan L. Pack, all the way from Arlington, Texas. Come on, can y'all thank God for my pastor? Amen. Thank you. you may be seated in the house of the Lord, those of you that desire. I'm going to try, Ma. I'm going to try, Ma. <laughs> there is a quote that I want to lift up. It says that when you begin to change how you think, those that are not ready for you to mature and grow into greater will call you selfish and not a team player. They'll call you anti. And ultimately, beloved, You'll be forced to either move forward with your, uh, with your change or be confined to stagnation from their words. It's interesting how God allows our transition and transformation to our next to play out. It's, 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 it's where the reality is God is preparing you, here it is, for his next, not yours. It won't ever start how they say it because his next oftentimes it looks a little different because I know just two years ago the next that they said looked contrary to the next that he said but we're yet we're standing here in one of the greatest facilities in this area. Oh, you ought to thank God for that. Because when his next is, is his next and not our next, it'll oftentimes look different than what they told us that it should be. Because they said you've got to start with a full bank account and a full refrigerator. But if 
we ask Jesus. He says, all I need is two fish and five loaves of bread. And our next can feed 5,000 uh, uh, women and children, uh, excuse me, 5,000 men, not including women and children. And for that, the enemy will sometimes, beloved, he will, will oftentimes be allowed to use the moment that God decides to use for development. And the devil will try to take credit for the moment. And it reveals to us, beloved, that the enemy does not want us to get to our intended destination. So when the enemy wants to fight us from getting to our intended destination, beloved, he will make every attempt to send us to a different destination. He will cause frustration, beloved. He'll cause anger. He'll cause impatience. He'll cause even sin to be the root of our redirection. So we get to a there, beloved, but it is not the there that God intended for us. So then we will be by routed in where God had predestinated for us because we allowed our emotions to get in the way. We allowed our impatience to get in the way. And then we got to come back to the man and woman of God and say, I'm sorry, I did it the wrong way. What did God really say to you in prayer the first time? And the reality is, had we listened, it would have went the right way. If, if, if the enemy cannot move you to a different destination, beloved, he will try to get into your head to get you to stop and quick so that you would forfeit the intended place that God has predestinated for you. He will let you settle in your own misery, in your own grief, in your own disappointment, in your own anger, in your own resentment, in your own unforgiveness, and you your own frustration. And those moments come, beloved, those moments come, beloved, to cripple us, comes to paralyze our next yes. And the intentions is to get you to sit still and say, I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not trusting another pastor. I'm not, I'm not going back to no more of those apostolic churches. I ain't going back over there and serving in that field and in that vineyard no more because the last two pastors, they were messy. Come to find out that when I made it to the free, I got free. Reality is, reality is, beloved, if the enemy cannot redirect you, if, if the enemy cannot restrict you, he will tire you out before you get to where you're going. And knowing this strategy of the enemy, it's interesting because on the way to Calvary, uh, mom, uh, Jesus' first stop at age 30 wasn't to the sanctuary, but it was an encounter with Satan. And the reality is, is that oftentimes on our way to our destination, a Holy Spirit will lead us into a place where we've got to have an encounter with Satan so that we can get it out of our system so that when they start talking, it won't bother us. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm still on my way. I'm not going to allow that situation to hinder me. I'm not going to allow that situation to stop me. I'm still headed in the right direction. God, God knew, he, he knew, God knew in his infinite wisdom that, uh, that while you're on your way, I want you to pass this test early uh, because we don't have time to deal, here it is, with elementary moments when it's time for elevation. And I just need you to tell somebody on your row, I need you to tell them, look at them, look at them dead ball in the eyeballs, and I want you to tell them, uh, I'm going to pass it this time. I'm going, I ain't, ain't got time to waste no more. I ain't got time. We, we in a new facility. We, we, got, we, we got all of this. God is speaking through the man of God. I ain't got no more time to waste. I'm not, I'm not wasting time on people. I'm not wasting time on situations. I'm not wasting time, yeah, even on my pass either you with me or you're not such as such as the instructions of our text this evening beloved um, 
such as uh, our instructions for the text tonight, we are here uh, and we are introduced to a man uh, that know that we all know all too well uh, about his destination, his discourses, and even he has to learn uh, what to do when it's time to develop an appetite for greater. And my first announcement tonight, this evening to the free is, I need you to know that God is changing your appetite. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can y'all just help me? Because I got some people that's acting bougie on this side. So I need y'all to help me over here. I just need y'all to tell somebody, God is changing my appetite. When he changes your appetite, beloved, things that used to be funny ain't funny no more. Things that used to titillate my senses ain't going to titillate them anymore. Things I used to talk about ain't going to be able to talk about them anymore because he's changing my appetite because my future is at hand. When your appetite is changing for something greater, beloved, people will automatically say you think you're better. The reality is I am better. I'm better than my last mistake. I'm better than my last situation. I'm better than the divorce. I'm better than when I quit school, but I'm about to start back again. I'm better than I let my EIN lapse, but I'm going back to get it again. Look at somebody else and tell them I'm somewhere else. On this journey, on this journey, we're just talking about Abraham. On this journey, and uh, we are introduced to Abraham in Genesis chapter number 11. We're introduced to the genealogy of this man by the name of Abram. Um, we identify that Abram is married to Sarai. And uh, in Genesis chapter number 12, Abram receives instructions from the Lord. Here it is. To leave his own country. And the Lord promises him, on your way out, I'm going to give you the GPS coordinates of the, lo of the land I'm going to show you. Not only that, the Lord said, I'm going to make you a great nation. He's not only that, he says, I'm going to bless you. Not only that, he says, I'm going to make your name great. Not only that, he says, because I'm going to make you a blessing to bless everything else in your life. Then the Lord says, I'm going to ensure you have instant reciprocity. Yeah. What does that mean, Reverend? That means that anybody that sows into me will instantly be blessed. Look at somebody and shout, I'm somewhere else, I'm somewhere else because blessings go wherever I go. Says, 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 says there's going to be instant reciprocity on whoever blesses you. Um, says, says Abraham out of you every family will be blessed because they came out of who you are and can I just put a, a, a quarter in the meter right here the reality is Dr. Curry is is that there are people that have left this ministry left your covering and we can still see they oil we can still see your oil on their life they sound like you they move like you and the reality is when it's potent oil no matter where they go we know that's one of Curry's children don't you get mad at that? The reality is that no matter how far they go, they got to come back. Because at the end of the day, when God does something in the earth, it has to. And yeah, it cannot return void. So that means as brothers and sisters, we cannot have issues when children come back home. Right. I'm still in chapter number 11. We got to keep moving. And so the story goes... Abram, Abram packs up his RV um, and he hits the road. He hit the road in his RV without a destination. Without a destination. And, uh, but, but, but here is the thing. He doesn't have a destination, but he has GPS coordinates. 
And if I was in front of the dissertation board, I would argue that Abraham, though we never see the word, I want you to know that there is Holy Spirit operating in his life. So while Abraham is a moving forward, God has spoken a word over his life and the GPS coordinates that's within him is Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit says, nope, don't go that way. Go this way. Don't go that way. Go this way. Don't go that way. As he's on his way and until he gets to the right place, what do we do? We keep moving forward. Which means, church, there are some moments where God will speak to us and many of you will go back to God and say, God, what's the next step? And when God is quiet, let me help you with sonship, when he's not saying anything, you go back to the last thing he said until he says something different. So that means if he says show up, keep showing up until he says something different. That means if he say be faithful, keep being faithful until he says something different. Look at somebody else and tell him I'm somewhere else. He says, Holy Spirit is leading him, Dr. Street. Holy Spirit is leading him, huh? and uh, he's on his way to a land that God hadn't told him what's what yet. Abram, beloved, his name is changed to Abraham. Abram means father. Abraham means many fathers. Um, and so people didn't realize why you had to change the name of where God is leading you because there's been some name changes that's been happening at the free. <clears throat> So the reality is, is that uh, when God is transitioning a entity from being a father to being a father of many fathers, oftentimes there has to be transition and change. And we can always tell who's mature in the room is that when change comes, I don't fight it. Sarai changes her name to Sarah. Her name is changed to Sarah, and then let's jump to Genesis chapter number 17. God makes Abraham a promise. I got to jump ship because I can't, I, can't, I can't spend too much time there. God makes Abraham a promise. Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 21, Abraham receives the promise called Isaac. Isaac is the promise. Isaac means that you shall laugh. We understand that the promise, because I know you got a good teaching, paperback, Bible saved leader. Uh, 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 Isaac is a promise that both Abraham and Sarah laugh at. They laugh so much that uh, it makes God say, okay, well, you think I'm lying, but well, this is what's going to happen at the end of the day. I'm going to make that womb that you say is too old has got to come forth, and something is going to be birthed out of you. When you know that God has placed you somewhere else you'll start birthing stuff in seasons that other people said it wasn't supposed to happen look at somebody and tell them I'm somewhere else I'm somewhere else and so and so we have this at the close of Genesis 21 something happens man of God something happens in Genesis chapter 21 at the end Abraham prioritizes his house and as a result of his priorities Abraham acquires more property. His territory is enlarged. He's, he's becoming more wealthier. So in, in chapter 21, book of Genesis, we're still there. Abraham gets his promise. Abraham prioritizes his house. And Abraham goes and gains more property. Let me say it one more time. At the end of Genesis chapter number 21, Abraham gets up his promise. Abraham prioritizes his house. And then Abraham gains more property. Which means when you get the promise, that's not the time that I get missing. That's the time that I've got to reprioritize what's in important in my life so that means if faithfulness got the raise then that means faithfulness still got to be a priority I can't get no help if if faithfulness got the new job, if faithfulness birthed the new, the new, the, uh, the new uh, uh, opportunity, the new beginning, then that means that has to be in the forefront. So you've got to understand and know, church. This means when the promise is released, it's not the time to do something different, but it's the time that we start prioritizing 
what's most important. That means that if sowing got the miracle and the blessing, that means that I can never forget his birthday. I can never forget church anniversary. And I can never forget his Episcopal anniversary. I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help somebody because those are the three greatest seasons of your life to sow. Is when God is adding years to him. And so, we get to Genesis chapter number 22. 22 shows up and Abraham is forced to put, put what was promised to him on the chopping block. You mean to tell me, God, I got I to gotta sacrifice what you promised me. Then something else happens in 23, because I got to keep moving. He experiences a loss. Seems like the free been through a loss before. I'm trying to get to where we got to get to. Genesis chapter number 24, the Bible declares in verse number 1 of chapter 24 that Abraham was old, well advanced at age, and the Lord had, past tense, blessed Abraham in all things. Let me try it again. He has uh, gotten his promise. His promise has to be put on the chopping block. Then he experiences a great loss, but then the Bible says in Genesis chapter 24 that Abraham was old, well advanced at age, and the Lord had past tense blessed Abraham in all things which is the revelation of this is that if I can be trusted with trouble then I can be trusted in triumph what if I was sent by God tonight to tell you that God is shifting and shaping something else in your life because you've been faithful over a few things and God is about to make you a ruler over much then in Genesis Chapter 25, where we are tonight, that's where we find our text. And Abraham is preparing Isaac for his future. Which means he's preparing for the future to produce. Because you do realize that even though you are preparing for 2022, if you don't prepare to produce, you'll just enter 2022 and go through everything as just going through it through the motions. But if you don't prepare to produce, you won't produce anything. Which, which, which reveals to us, ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that this future that, uh, that Abraham is preparing for, he is preparing for it in a way that may seem oxymoronic to uh, what some people would say love is. Oh, it's, 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 it's interesting because uh, in this text, Genesis chapter 25, uh, um, um, it, he, he seems as if he is not taking in consideration all of his children. Hope I don't get in trouble tonight, Dr. Curry, but you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be what it is. Um, uh, the first time, um, the first time Sarah has to tell Abraham when he impregnates Hagar, uh, she has to tell him to send them away. Get them out of here because they're not, they not supposed to be here. But now in Genesis chapter 25, it's Abraham that does the sending. And uh, beloved, it's, it's something, ladies and gentlemen, that, that if you would allow me to understand and, and share with you a little bit more uh, from this well-nourished uh, baked bread, we're going to pull some ingredients out of it, and I believe it's going to make us the better and the richer, and uh, that's just my introduction. Let's get ready to ride. So the Bible says in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 25, verse number 5, Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But then unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward into, uh, unto the east country. What I need you to understand this evening is that I don't care who's connected. The only thing that's going to last is what's covenant. I just need you to do a road check and just ask them, are you covenant? Are you, are you covenant? Are, are, you, are you covenant? Are, are you here to stay? Are, are, you, are, are, you, are, are you looking to put stakes in the ground? Because, because we ain't got time to play. I'm trying to build something here. 
uh, and since y'all legal now, y'all y'all 21 years old, it means that your decisions will cost more if you make them without counting up the cost. And, and, and here, here is where we make the mistake. The text reveals there's more connections than there are covenants. He's, he's got more concubine sons than he does covenant sons. And, 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 and when what happens is, man of God, we'll start numbering stuff in our life. Who's really here in my life? Who ain't? And we disregard the one to two covenant relationships we got. And we'll start looking at concubine type experiences. And we will forego what's really been there and what's really been in our corner. Here it is. Bible tells David... First Chronicles chapter number 21, David gets in trouble because, uh, Dr. Curry, he starts numbering the people. Start counting them, one, two. God said, don't do that. And the reason why he told him not to do that is that when we start numbering stuff, that means we don't trust him. And what if I was sent by God to tell you that there are just certain seasons in your life that you can't look at numbers, you can't look at who's in your life and who's with you. You got to stop posting about I can't get no help. You got to stop posting about it. You got to stop talking about it because at the end of the day, who's going to be there? God will make provision. And this problem that David creates in 1 Chronicles is actually affects uh, uh, Luke's, uh, 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 the physician, Luke, according to the Gospel of Luke. It actually affects what happens to Jesus because he uh, started numbering the people. What happens is there is this trend of taxation. Because anytime you got to number the people, then that means it gives the government the opportunity to tax them. So as she's carrying the word in her belly, she's got to experience a mistake that uh, somebody in her lineage did. Can I speak and prophesy over your life tonight? Everything that somebody else did in your family has got to break. Because you will no longer experience the effects of what somebody else did in your life. I need you to holler back at me and tell me I'm somewhere else and while while the number may be less of whose covenant the covenant is the blessing I dare you to just prophesy to somebody. You, you ain't got to say it loud. I just dare you to uh, just prophesy to them. Uh, you're the blessed one. You're the, you're the blessed one. You, you're the blessed one. You're the you the one that God is going to use out of your family. You the, you the one that's going to break the mold. You're the one that's going to transition some stuff. You're the one. You're the one. Yeah, yeah. You're the one. And Abraham, beloved, Abraham has to ensure he protects the investment of his future and pours into Isaac everything that Isaac needs to be successful. The sons of the concubines were present, and in connection, it was only Isaac that was in covenant. Which brings us, beloved, to the first task that Abraham has to be comfortable with, and that is selected giving. Somebody shout, selected giving. Uh, selected giving reveals three things to us, beloved. It reveals uh, that how Abraham is able to control the narrative. It reveals how Abraham is able to contain the normative. But then it also reveals to us how Abraham is able to contribute to what will become the normal concept. So what happens is when he controls the narrative, the reality is we know who, who, uh, we know and understand how this thing should go based upon relationship. We understand that covenant means that if I show up, I'm going to always show up. If you in my life, I'm going to support you. And the reality is that God is calling us to a different place of accountability so that the man of God understands and knows he has free reign to control the narrative. Oh, some of y'all didn't like that. The reality is, is that God has to protect his heart. He's got to protect her heart. So that means that he can't give oil to stuff that ain't going to stay. Here is the reality. Some people 
won't value what I have sacrificed. They'll only see it as an option. And when people don't understand your sacrifice, they will only pursue or see you as an option. So deliver me from people that got multiple pastors. Deliver me from people that got multiple spiritual parents. And can I be, can I be honest? If he's your spiritual father, she's got to be your spiritual mother. And you can't have a spiritual father and have a spiritual mother somewhere else because you create an illegal marriage. Selected giving. Abraham says, not in this season because we've got an entire world to impact. And I won't waste time with people that was never created for my future moves. You've got to know in this hour that God is preparing you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, men and women of God, there are, there are six six-figure earners that's got to pop up out of nowhere in 2022 for this house because God is going to reveal himself in a way because there's vision that's got to go forward. Look at somebody and shout, I'm one of the ones. I'm one of the ones. I'm one of the ones. Says, Abraham says, before... I give to the wrong thing, I'll maintain the posture of selected giving. And Abraham loves all of his children, but God favors one over the other. And what do you do when you have to function in culture of favoritism? Uh, you, 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 you know I'm talking to you that you, your grandma's favorite. You, you were the one that they said, oh, you, you, you her favorite. I'm, I'm, a, I'm talking to you where you are the favorite on your job. You know, you know the supervisor favors you over other people. I'm talking about you. Some of y'all are the favorite here at the at free, free, free. You for the, you the favorite. You the favorite. Look at somebody and say, I'm, 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 I'm the favorite. I'm the favorite. Now, how do I become the favorite? When, when trying to cause no problems. But the reality is, but the reality is, here it is. You become the favorite by being visible, by being verbal, and by being vulnerable. Because sonship has a track record. And if I can't track you, then that means I can't trust you. Can I tell you what the Lord told me? Can I tell you what the Lord told me? At the, at the, at the beginning of COVID-19, the Holy Spirit says, I need you to change how you're following your leader. I said, okay, God, what do you mean? He says, I need you to stop chasing his oil. I said, now wait, Lord, now, now wait. Because that's contrary to what everybody been preaching across the country. We're supposed to chase the oil. That's, that's, what you, that's what you've been telling all the men and women of God across the country. You got to chase the oil. He says, No! I don't want you to chase his oil. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, what you want me to do? He says, I need you to chase his trust. Because he says, uh, if you can chase his trust, you'll get the oil by default. Can I, can I prophesy over you and let you know that God is about to raise you up in another level of trust. There are some people that have done some things that they wouldn't have, but I'm letting you know that tonight is a night where God is wiping the slate clean and you're going to get another chance. I'm prophesying to leaders that are in this house that God is about to send you some people that you can trust. Some people that you can be you and the pastor around. I can't get no help right there. Look at somebody and shout, I'm somewhere else. Okay. Um, some people may not like my teaching, but it's all good. And Abraham loves all of his sons. But God is only seeking concerning just one. And, uh, and uh, what if the thing you, you're concerned about is not what God is talking about? 
because some of us can be concerned about the wrong thing. We are over here in the vegetable aisle and God says, I don't even want you over there. I need you to be over here in the snacks. And the reality is sometimes we can have our ideas, our ideologies, our own doctrines that wouldn't talk to us. I can't get no help. The reality is we can have all of that stuff mixed in with the wrong way and God is saying that's not what I said can I be honest some stuff ain't been working out for some of you in this house and it should be overflowing but if it's not working then that means you've got to shift your doctrine you've got to stop mixing what he says and what you want to do that's a mixture of doctrines. That's a, that's a mixture of doctrines. I can't say I believe in the blood. I can't say that I believe in the power of Holy Ghost. But then I still burn sage. Because I'm mixing doctrines. And that's contrary to what the Holy Spirit told me to do. That means that in prayer, I've got to be diligent in prayer. Because if I need something from God, then I've got to go to God. Then I've got to go to my leader. Abraham, he loves all of his sons. But God is only speaking concerning one. God wanted Abraham to realize that in this next season of your life, I need you to be focused on Isaac and what Isaac represents. I need to remind you, beloved, that Isaac represents the future, and I've got to ensure that my future is secure. The Bible says Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. And sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And the text reveals, here it is, not just selected giving, but it also reveals Abraham's strategy of how he must master sharing the gift. So we move from selected giving to sharing of a gift. Abraham does share his gifts, here it is, but he didn't give all of him. And I got to speak to some people in the room because Abraham gave the gifts that he had to the connected, but he gives all that he is to the covenant. And there's a difference between uh, that I give all my gifts that I have and then I give all of what I am. There is a difference between the two, which means, here it is, that some of you have to learn the difference between uh, what you have and who you are. Because sometimes we can become so accustomed or so consumed about being gifted that we begin to think we're the gift. And it's not that we are not a gift, but the gift that we have is not the same as the gift that we are. And so playing the organ and playing the drums, that is, that is a gift. That's a gift that God gave, but that doesn't mean that's all of who I am. Can I, can I let you know and let you know something? The reason why Jesse had such a problem with David uh, coming uh, under the horn of oil is because uh, he was gifted at the family business. He was good at what he was doing, but the reality was, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, that's not all uh, of who David was. And can I prophesy over to you that some of your family, that's all that they see you as is what you have been in your past but I came to unlock something in you tonight to let you know that you are more than what they said that you are you are more than that look at somebody and tell them for the first time look at them and tell them I'm somewhere else so if we don't separate what we do versus who we are all we'll know how to do is give ourselves. And this is a common mistake we make in the body of Christ. You give yourself instead of giving your gift. And then when your gift is not utilized the right way, then you start having a problem with how your gift was augmented or utilized. And the reality is you were supposed to give your gift but keep your feelings. Because it's not about how I feel. It's about getting to where we got to go. 
So that means if I'm gifted in finance, then I need to know and understand that there are some things I got to offer. And that means at the end of the day, I've got to offer what I got, not just who I am. And can I say this? Can I say this? Let me drop this in just, uh, just for the people in the back. Uh, being the best available doesn't mean you're the best. And in 21 years of ministry, I'm pretty sure Dr. Curry, uh, at moments in ministry, he had to use the best available, but, but you wasn't the best. And this is where we can tell how mature you are, is that the best available serves in that area until the best shows up. And then when the best shows up, the best available has got to move out the way because it's not about me, it's not about my feelings, it's about us getting to where we got to go. Look at somebody and tell them I'm somewhere else. I'm somewhere else. Abraham understands that whatever he releases out of his life comes with great significance. And it can't just grow to anywhere. And it can't just go to anybody. You've got to be able to ensure in this season that you're giving the right gift. There are some people that want what you have, sons of concubines. But then there are some people that want what and who you are. That's Isaac. And uh, can, we, can, we, can we just be honest there? It's easy for us to call him the apostle. It's easy for us to call him that. But when is the last time, uh, when is the last time you said, I want to just bless the man of God. I, I, I want to bless my leader. Let's, 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 not, let's not make him work for something that I want to give freely. There are some people who want what you are. And the problem is we have at times is we're trying to give ourselves to those that only want our stuff. And we'll give our stuff to people that only want us. There are some people in our lives, beloved, across uh, this particular amazing room of amazing individuals. You've been trying to give yourself to people that want your stuff, but then you've been trying to give your stuff to people that just want you. All they want is just a phone call to make sure you're good. All they, they don't want nothing else from you. They just want to check on you. They want to make sure that's what covenant is supposed to be. And while God was working through Abraham to protect Isaac, he had Isaac separated to protect his growth. Verse number six says, but unto the sons of the concubines, I'm about to make my turn now, sir, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. I gave them a warning. I just hope, hope we, I, I know they're good. They're good. And, and, and sent them away from Isaac, his son. They're some of my favorite musicians in the world. And, and while he yet lived eastward unto the east country, uh, not only does Abraham have to master selected giving, not only does he have to master shared giving, beloved, but also he has to accept, here it is, the separation for growth. God never intended for you, here it is, to fall in love with everything you serve. And it's, it's, hard, it's a hard thing to do, beloved, because at 21 years, y'all have had some amazing wins, but there's been some heart losses. And it's hard to fall in love. It's hard to serve and not fall in love with what you serve. But Abraham lets us know, and he reveals to us, Abraham shares his gifts. Here it is. He gives the sons of the concubines gifts, and then he sends them away from Isaac, his son. This is the one reason why he sends them away. Abraham sends them away so he won't fall in love with them. Because we are talking about a father of fathers. He is, he has a genuine heart to love. And the reality is, can I be honest with you, beloved? There are some people that God had to make sure that they walked away from you early so that you wouldn't fall in love with them. Look at, look at somebody and tell them they had to go. They had to go. They had to walk early so that I wouldn't fall in love with them. And Abraham, that if I don't get them away from me, he says, he understood if I don't get them away from me, I'm going to create a covenant tie that was never intended. 
What if I was sent by God to tell you tonight, there are certain things in your life you were never supposed to wed. You were only supposed to witness. You was just supposed to tell them about the goodness of the Lord, but you were not supposed to go in covenant with them. The reality is you've been trying to figure out, God, why didn't it work out? And the reality is God never intended for that to work out because he was protecting the investment of your future because he knew if you stayed and connected with that long enough, you would have blew your own brains out. But aren't you glad we serve, aren't you glad that we serve a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever Acts or think. What that text reveals to me is, uh, is that even when I can't think that I don't need that, God said, let me work that out for you. Even when God understands and knows uh, that you're about to make the biggest mistake in your life, he'll still protect you even in the midst of it. That's why in God's infinite wisdom, he never allows the children of Israel to fall in love with being in the wilderness. Dr. Kerr, when I was reading, uh, Holy Spirit shared to me, while they were in the wilderness, he, God is so amazing. He creates man of God. He creates a deli in the desert. He creates a deli in such a way that he starts giving them this stuff called manna. And manna, beloved, is what is it? So every time they ate, they could never identify what it was because in God never intended for their appetite to be stuck in a place that they were never supposed to be. Can I be honest and let you know that there were some people in your life that you never could get it together with them? Yeah, 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 I'm talking to you. There were just some people that it never did work out the right way because God never intended for your appetite to be connected to them. It wasn't supposed to work out. Just. And then you say, God, it's just something about them. That's something about them. It was because they were manna. And can I be honest, God sent them in your life for the season to just let you know that your heart still worked, but it was never intended for the covenant to be manifested. He wanted you to try love again, but he never intended for you to try love full speed with them. He just wanted your heart to keep bumping. He just wanted you to be, yeah, where he wanted you to be so that when the right one showed up, I could connect to what it was. So he says, so he says, 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 I've got to, I've got to, got to make sure that I separate you for growth. Because where God is taking you, I can't have everything connected to you. And that's why, that's why it didn't work. That's why, that's why God understood in his infinite wisdom what it was that you had to accomplish. I just need you to just look at somebody and just tell them, I just need you to tell them real quick, I'm somewhere else. And you're somewhere else because God has intended for you to go further than any other person in your family. Here it is. He separated you from some of your family members so that you wouldn't, yeah, so that you wouldn't carry the tendencies of them to the next place where God wanted you to be. And it doesn't mean that you're mad. It don't mean that you got to be mean, hateful, or nasty. But it does mean that God had to protect everything around you. He had to protect your mind. He had to protect your heart. He had to protect your intellect. He had to protect your desires. He had to protect your appetite. Look at somebody and shout, I'm somewhere else. Yes, Lord. I'm somewhere else. I'm somewhere else because I know that the hand of the Lord is on my life. Look at somebody and shout, I'm somewhere else. And the miracle is out of every mistake that I've made, out of every person that I connected to the wrong way, I still got my mind. I still got my heart. I still got my peace. I still got it. 
Look at somebody and shout, I still got it. I still, I still. I want you to high five somebody and tell them, you still got your peace. You still got your mind. I'm somewhere else. Yes, Lord. I'm still, I still got my peace. I'm somewhere else. Here it is. I got my peace because, yes, I still got my peace because he was a wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are heels. I want you to just look at somebody and throw your voice like an arrow and if y'all can hit me one time and shout up somewhere else Yes, Lord. I need you to look at somebody for real and shout, I'm somewhere else. My money's somewhere else. My house is somewhere else. My children is somewhere else. My business is somewhere else. I'm somewhere else. Yes, I'm somewhere else. I'm somewhere else. My appetite is somewhere else. My love is somewhere else. My peace is somewhere else. My family somewhere else and because I'm somewhere else I don't know if y'all got grandkids but I got four grandchildren my grandchildren is somewhere else they gonna win at a different level than I want us look at somebody and shout out somewhere else yeah I'm somewhere else somewhere else I just I just need you to look at somebody for real I need you to tell them your money is somewhere else no no for real no for real for real I just heard the Holy Spirit say, he's, he's turning periods into commas. Look at somebody and tell them I'm somewhere else. My credit is somewhere else. My marriage is somewhere else. My health is somewhere else. Yeah. My body is somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm somewhere else. mind is somewhere else. My heart is somewhere else. 21 years is so critical for y'all because you're about to make a turn. But this is what I need you to understand. Big trucks don't make sharp turns. Oh, I ain't even see that right there. Big trucks don't make sharp turns. That means as a body of believers, when he starts shifting, he got to shift with him. I love riding mopeds, dirt bikes. Oh, my wife won't let me get a motorcycle, but I'm going to keep praying. She said, I can, but you know, it is what it is. When you're riding with somebody, when they make their turn, you got, you, you got to, you, you got to, you got to lean with them. 
I, I, I just I just need about 10 people. I'll make number 11. I'll make number 11. Will you just prophesy and shout? I'm going to lean this time. I'm going to lean this time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the way that I got to move this time. I'm going to transition the way I got to transition this time. I've got to move how I'm going to move. Because everything that's connected to me has got to move. Somebody shout. Yes. I'm somewhere. Listen, if y'all can give me that click track, we got to get there. We got to get to where we got to get to. Listen, we're going to give God a praise because we are somewhere else. And because we're somewhere else, this next praise is because... <laughs> It's because I'm not where I was before church started. And as we, as we lean into 21 years, going into 22 years, there is about to be a revolution that happens here at the free. I'm praying that there is about to be a shift and change where you don't have enough seats for the people. And what real sons and daughters are going to do, instead of sitting, when they see a new face, you can have my seat. Because I know that we're leaning, and I want new people to feel at home. I need somebody, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Out the way.
but this is 21 years of a man and a woman of God giving God a yes. I need you to prophesy and shout I'm somewhere else. I want this to be embedded in your spirit in such a way. That when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you think about, I'm somewhere else. My prayer life is going to another level. My devotion to this house is going to another level. My commitment to Bible study is going to another level. Making sure my whole family is at church going to another level. My consistency in giving is going to another level. My production at work is going to another level. Because you ain't got to like them to be productive. Go there, be nice. Do the job and get promoted. Build the resume and go somewhere else. I just need you to shout one more time. I'm somewhere else. Holy Spirit told me to tell the leaders of this house that there is about to be another convergence that will birth something else new. I ain't talking about reformation per se. I'm, I'm talking about there is something organic that this world has not seen yet that's going to be released from the Curry House. I wrote it all down because I wanted to make sure I got all the format in which this new thing comes, it's not been written. So you're going to be the blueprint for the blueprint. And this means that there is going to be a new season of trusting God at a whole nother level. That God is going to bring back a residual income of no less than a million dollars. This new thing will require new and refreshed commitments from those that are present and for those that will come. He'll handpick and hand select individuals to be a part of a secret team that's going to take his vision and dream of what God is going to give him to a whole nother level. This is going to be the move that's going to allow some people in this room to walk away from their jobs. You're going to be able to tell them, thank you. I appreciate the time here, but I'm going to work for my pastor. He told me to tell you, you're going to have to trust him in a new way for a new thing. And he said, I'm going to bend your mind your side. He says, I'm going to bend the universe to be your to be to be the will of whatever you speak out of your mind. So whatever you say, God says, I'm gonna bend the universe to make it come to pass. He says, Watch what you say, man of God. Because your words have so much power. Because God has blessed people that wasn't supposed to be blessed just from your words. They were supposed to go under, but you said, God, give them another chance. God sent them a life raft because he sent it, not because of them, but at your word. Says, going to bend the universe to their will. This is a very powerful sign 
that good things will happen to you if you take this initiative seek the Lord as he's going to reveal to you and it won't be a destination man to God but it's going to be GPS coordinates and he's going to give you direction as you go God, what am I supposed to write? And he's going he's gonna to pen it for you. And you, before you finish, it's going to be a full page of instructions and directions. I, I, I don't know, God, what it all is because we prophesy in part. But at the end of the day, Holy Spirit says, eyes have not seen. This isn't cliche. I need you to hear the weight of this word. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God is going to reveal to you, sir. And the last thing the Holy Spirit says, he says, from this, you're going to be able to give him the check that you've been wanting to give him. The big one. The big one that's the big one that's going to make some other people jealous. More jealous than what they are now. Because you're the only guy that I know that gives me a run for my money by how I serve my leader. If you want to gauge yourself and how to serve, look at your pastor. He's setting the bar for what other pastors should be doing to their pastors. So why not be in authority and under authority? If I've got authority over my house, I should be submitted to the authority of this one. Would you just lift your hands right where you are and just, I just need us to fill this room with worship right here. I need this word sealed, Lord. I need this word sealed for the Curry House. I need this word sealed. I, I want to see my brother and my sister blessed. I want to see them go get Ferraris this time. I want to see them go get Bentleys this time. I want to see them go get Rolls Royces this time. I'm not jealous. Lord, bless them. I want to see them blessed in such a way that it makes the devil shake his head. Trying to figure out. How did somebody in the kingdom do it the right way? Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Enlarge their territory. For this space will be too small. Sooner or later, she got it. The space will be too small sooner or later. Because real praise don't need no music. It's just in your heart. And when my leader receive a word, I dance because I'm sealing it not just with my words, but I'm sealing it with my action. Lord, bless them. Bless them. Last but not least, Holy Spirit told me, he says, I need you, to, need you to challenge the people with a $56 seed tonight. Here is why. Because I know I'm Isaac. No, I'm Isaac. $56 seed tonight. The instruction of this $56 seed is that while I'm planting seed in the ground because I know I'm somewhere else, I need you to know that God is going to do something unmeasurable concerning your house. Man of God, when you came and preached for me, you didn't know. My mother is here. When you came to preach for us, when the porters came to us, we were staying in a one-bedroom apartment with my mom. My mom had the bedroom, and my wife and I shared the living room. Our intimate moment was holding hands across a coffee table because I was believing God for what he told me. I sent my children to my, my other mom. She's here to their house to live because God says, if you trust me, I'll do what you ask. For, so for nine months, Dr. Curry, I preached faith and preached and prophesied new stuff into other people's houses while I went back to a one-bedroom apartment, shared with my mom and my wife, a grown man living in the living room of his mother. 
this was about six years, seven years, six years ago. And the Lord said, if you trust me, I'm going to give you what you desire. I left an apartment because I said, God, this ain't it. There's got to be something more than this. How can people get houses and I can't get a house? He said, because I want you to get it a different way. So I sent my children over there, which was, which was by far, I almost felt like treason against myself. Because I had to separate my family for a season. And this woman of God that had been walking with me for almost 15 years, with tears in her eyes, she says, I trust you. And nine months later, we walked into our new home. But it wasn't just my obedience. We got to move quickly. It wasn't just my obedience to the instructions, but it was also my seed that I put in the ground. What would have took me three years only took me nine months. No money down. And Lady E, we walked away with a check. Somebody shout, I'm somewhere else. $56 seat. I want you to stand with me all over the room. I'm sharing that because to encourage your faith, there is somebody in this house tonight that needs to release this $56 seat because it's going to be a seat of faith for you. You're saying, man of God, I'm not sure if I can do it. I'm telling you, you got to do it tonight. Why do I have to do it? Because my future is riding on this moment. I'm somewhere else. If you got that $56 seat, I need you to stand with me. You won't be the only one. I'm going to be given as well. Matter of fact, I'm giving a $100 seat tonight because I believe in the word of, this, of the Lord tonight. And I came prepared to give. If we have a title, then that means we should be the examples of what should be giving. And so anytime I preach, I never ask the people for something that I won't do. And most of the time, I won't do double if I don't leave everything that I got there. Anybody else? Rest of the room, I need you to get the closest thing to $56 that you can and stand with me. I need you to get the closest thing with me. I need you to hold that seed up in the air this today. Shout back with me. Lord, I give instruction to my seed today. Blessed, O oh God, that it would return in the manner in which my house, in which my family, and everything about me is in need of. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, bring that seed right where you are. Giving information is on the screen. If you would like to give by other ways, please do so. Bless God for you all, and I thank you for this opportunity. Free, I love you all. And may God bless you and have it smile upon you. In Jesus' name. Would I give God a hand praise for the man of oh God? Come on. Come on, play, clap a little better than that. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for
Free and independent and visitors, can y'all do me a favor? Give God a big hand praise for all the local bishops, apostles that came on today. Come on, do better than that. Come on, the Lord has been good to us. We want to say thank you for coming on tonight. Made our heart feel good to see you on tonight. The Lord has been majorly good to us here at 475 Marine Boulevard. He's been great to us. The Lord has come down just a little bit. The Lord has given us a challenge and a mandate that's really against who I am. A lot of people see I'm very loud preaching and singing, but I'm not that loud really. So when the Lord gave me causes people to be around me and I'm not really a people person. I'm not. But when you're pastor, it shifts who you are to serve who God gives you. And a lot of times we make a mistake to think that what they present behind a pulpit is who they really are. That's what God is using. And until we know that our leader is more than what he is behind the pulpit or she is behind the pulpit, We'll always be doing a disservice with serving God through our leader. And so we thank God for what he's getting ready to do and some of the things that he has shared with us to do even concerning this city. I did a conference 10 years ago. It was called the Regathering of the Saints, Jacksonville, North Carolina. 10 whole years ago. Probably more than that. It was at 115B Liberty Drive. And he said, every year you will bring the local church together for a whole week and you will have conference. I did it one time. It was an amazing success and I never did it again. And I had to repent for not completing the mandate of God. Tell you what God said to me and I'm going to share some on Tuesday and I hope you all tune in. The Lord said to, to me, Bishop Smith, he says the reason why we're losing members is because we're not connected. So they'll leave my church and go to yours. Leave yours and go to his. And they do it because leaders don't stop them. And we don't stop them because we're not in covenant. Okay, all right, I'll let you learn. Because we're in covenant, then you say go home. Until you're properly released to be transitioned. Oh, y'all quiet. And so the local church is bleeding. The local church is hemorrhaging. We're hemorrhaging. I don't care what nobody thinks. We're hemorrhaging. The Holy Ghost said it. We're hemorrhaging. Because we won't. And, and here it is, Mom. It ain't even about who's leading it. I told him, I'm I said, I don't care who wants to be the leader. It don't, I'm 50 now. When I was 30, I wanted to lead everything. Now I'm not 50. I don't care. Now that I'm 50. I don't care about leading nothing. Let's just do something. Y'all quiet. And then let's and stop letting our members change our mind about each other. I'll leave that alone. And as the Holy Ghost said to me this weekend, I'm celebrating. He's talking to me like, like 21 years. He says, and what does that mean? What have you done? Besides shout and, and build a church. What have you done for me? in lieu of ministry and bringing people together. It is more than your local body. It's so much more. Back, I'm from New York, and I'm going to close with this. I'm back, I'm from New York, and so in New York, when one church had something going on, all the churches just showed up. And after that conference, they went back to their churches. Oh, y'all quiet. Now when folks show up at our church, we're whispering in the air saying, you belong here. Oh, y'all quiet. I have members of other churches that come here every first Sunday night. For my millennial Sunday night, I prophesy, strengthen them, and I send them back. Oh, no, I do. Go back over there, go back over there. You was here to get strengthened. Because how many know that every church ain't got a prophet? Y'all not going to say nothing. Every church ain't got a prophet. You'd be crazy to think that they do. And we're a five-fold ministry fitly joined. 
huh? Fitly joined. So whatever I have, and I'll give to you. Whatever you have, you'll give to me. And somewhere between that, we all going to be strong. We all going to be strong. This has been the greatest, hear me, anniversary because it's been the most supported. Okay, I'll leave that alone. It's been the most supported. And I already told, I already made up in my mind, and I told my, my team, I have a team that rolled with me. I said, now make sure we see these flies, local flies, let me know what's going on, because we showing up. Y'all going to see me in your buildings. We're showing up. Because we want to show you that you are greater, and you have people that love you. Genuinely. And want to see you be successful. Now, it is authentic because of the crash course. The Holy Ghost just arrested me. Wasn't nothing I thought about or tried to figure out. It was just something God said to do. And that's what we're going to do with the help of God. And I'm hoping some of the bad bishops and apostles are going to help me do this. And we're going to do it together. Ain't no doggone well, Apostle Curry leader. Ain't none of that. Ain't none of that. We gonna do it together. And whoever church we in, we follow your rules. We come to your church, we follow your rules. Come to your church, we follow your rules. And pour us all over. I promise you, and I believe this, that our churches and our members and the commitment is gonna be healthy. It's gonna be real healthy. <laughs> It's going to be real healthy. So again, I want to thank my church, Free and Independent. Hey, babies. I want to thank all the Free and Independent for just being around and hanging out. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely. We are on fumes right now. We've been dancing hard all weekend. That's why we had to sing some old songs, because the song I had to, ready for them to sing, Too High. They was like, Dad. I was like, oh, no, we can't sing that. We cannot sing. Now, if I was 20, I was like, we singing this anyway. Y'all better go drink some tea. Remember, Queen, go get some tea. Y'all going to be all right. <laughs> but now I'm like, no, we can't sing that. Let's do something else. But we make ourselves look crazy. Amen. I want to thank my spiritual mother, Pastor Gwendolyn Fulcher, for being here. Do better than that. Now, I'm telling y'all now, so get ready for the fly. She don't even know this because I'm saying it now. I'm getting ready to do her an appreciation service here. I am. All proceeds going to her. I am. And it's going to be very soon. Very, very soon. Because she deserves it. 100%. And if nobody don't know it, now you know. That's my mother. So I don't know what they saying in the street. But that's my mother. Period. And I only have one of them one mother because I was going to quit she stopped me and I was going to do all kind of craziness she stopped me when I was 24 years old oh y'all ain't saying nothing came to Jacksonville wasn't going to church I decided I wasn't going to go to church went, went down Newbridge Street and saw her cleaning up the foyer I was in Camp Johnson, just finished playing basketball. Killing everybody for about an hour. You know how we did, let's play. I walked in there, I, ain't, I wasn't even trying to go to church, I just saw two women out there just cleaning. I was like, what these people doing? So I went up and just said, she said, hey, Shug, I don't even know you. I don't know you, who's Shug? What's a Shug? I'm from New York, what is Shug? <laughs> She said, come to church tomorrow. I said, oh, Lord. So I told the Lord I wasn't going back to church. I'm done. Got there. They had 10 people in the choir. 
singing in unison. I said, oh, no, we can't do this. Quee up there singing. She like, quee a teenager. They singing in unison hymns. I said, oh, no, I can't come back here. They singing in unison. She said, what you do? I said, I direct choir. She said, you ain't got to join, just direct my choir. Just <laughs> I'll tell you, a year later, that church was packed out. We had a 60-voice choir. No, literally, we were one of the biggest churches in this city. By a long shot, we were. By a long shot, Abundant Life was in the, was in the fellowship hall next door. They didn't even have a building yet. They didn't have a building. They were right there at a conference center, right there. Oh no, that's how long I've been here. I've been in Jacksonville since 1991. 1991, 30 years I've been here. Amen, I've seen them come, I've seen them go. Amen, but we're still here. And I guess we're here for a reason, so we might as well start going to work. Amen. To my queen. Hey, baby girl. Amen. This Friday, it'll be, this Friday coming up, be a 30 years married. This Friday. 30 years. This Friday. I don't see how she did it. I have no idea how she did it, though. Woo! She survived me, boy. Amen. And it's been a good thing. Five kids, five grand girls. Amen. God has been good to us. He's been good to us. Amen. Would you stand all over the building? We're going home. We're going home. Anything else? Old apostolic. Anything else claim my attention? Nothing? All right. That's what he said in my home church. Anything else claim my attention? All hearts and minds are clear. I want to thank, amen, Bishop Flack and his ministry. Coming. Amen. Preach for them. Last time I preached for them, they was in a small building, and I told them they was getting ready to leave this building. And I prophesied them right into where they are now. And because of the pandemic, we haven't seen each other for three years, almost. And I said, the Lord said, bring them down. So I said, all right. I believe in doing what God tells me to do. So we brought them down, amen, to be in fellowship with us. Keep on praying, y'all, because the Lord said this to me, and I'm closing. He says, I'm going to end the pandemic, but I'm not going to end it until you get what you need. Which means there's going to be one more wave that's going to bring the economy down to what you can afford. And what you thought you could not afford is going to end up in your lap. All right. Don't believe it. Because it's already happening for me right now. It's funny he said Rolls Royce because both my Teslas I bought from a Rolls Royce dealer. So he ain't no fake prophet. Both of my Teslas I bought from Raleigh at a Rolls Royce dealer. Now, I believe in letting prophets know when they're on. Because we sure enough let them know when they're off. <laughs> we let them know Facebook, know Instagram, and Twitter. But when they're on, we don't say nothing. Look at somebody say, encourage the prophet makes him want to prophesy a little more, help you a little more. Father, we thank you now for this amazing night. We thank you for what you have done. Grace and peace. Wow. What a word. Listen, we're not out of word, but we're out of time. Thank you for joining us freely to the Apostolic Church. I'm the senior pastor, Dr. Keith K. Curry, for a wonderful service we have today. Join us again, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Our power and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our worship I service. Said, you can now. sow by the number that's on the screen right now. We have plenty of ways to give. I'm going to use those ways to tithe, give an offering. If something blessed you, sow a seed. We call it sow with your growth. Listen.
See us next time. I need Dr. Keith K. Curry. And I'll prove this message. Miracle.